All right, so let's talk about test required, test optional, test blind. Now, test required is straight up. They want to see, you want to see either ACT or SAT tests. Um, you need to submit those when you submit your applications to college. Um, now, old school, I get parents who come to me and say, well, they, they do both tests because when, when I was taking the test, sometimes some schools took the ACT, some schools took the SAT. Now, everybody accepts both. So it doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about which college is taking which. They all accept either the SAT or ACT um, now. So that's just the traditional um, approach. That's what, um, that's what schools have done um, for, say, since they really started really taking the test, started really becoming um, important, say, in the 70s. Um, now, however, um, with, um, and this especially came, came in with COVID, um, the schools decided, well, let's go test optional. Now let's, I want to slow down and talk about what test optional means and what it doesn't. Test optional sounds like it means, oh, uh, I can just submit my scores or not. They don't care. They're just going to look at everything else and decide what I want to, what I, whether I get in or not. That's not how it works. Okay. So test optional is not actually optional for you. It's actually optional for the schools. Okay, so the schools can say, let's say you're an athlete, a really good athlete, or a really good art, uh, you know, art student, or grandpa gave $50 million for the science department wing, uh, um, whatever that is, they can now, the test optional schools can say, oh, we, and we can let you, and don't worry about your scores. We can let you in anyway. We'll just look at your grades, and that'll be, and that'll be all we need to do. So it's not about you saying, oh, I don't have to submit scores, because given two students with the same grade, same extracurriculars, basically same portfolios, the student that does submit scores is going to have a leg up over the student that doesn't. They're, and they're actually going to question why you don't submit scores. So it's really important to think about it in those terms, because it's really not, it's not like, Hey, we don't care about SATs anymore. Actually, they do. And as we saw in that last, the other slide, that you know, 80 something percent. Basically, about 75 percent of schools went test optional in the last few years. Um, of those, half of those went test um, test optional as a temporary measure, and about half of them went test optional as a permanent measure. But we're even seeing now sort of schools having second thoughts about what they want to do on test optional. MIT just came out with a very, very clear statement saying, we want these tests and we are, we are, we are ending test optional. We're going back to test required for this because we feel it's the best predictor of college readiness. And let's just define what college readiness is. Are you going to be able to survive first year of college? That's really what this is. Because they don't want to admit students that are going to drop out. They want students who are going to be there for the first, survive the first year and then get through the four, four, the four years. If you get, the statistics are pretty clear. If you get through that first year, chances are you've got a really good chance of graduating. Because the vast majority of people who don't graduate wash out after the first year. So they really, this whole thing about college readiness is really, are you going to get through that first year? Are you prepared? Are you, are you academically prepared to make it through that? Through that, um, through that year. Now, here's the thing about it, though. If you've got schools that are taking a lot of students that they that all of a sudden now, whereas before you had a student athlete and you you, you wanted to really get them in, and they probably you know your average SAT score say is 1350 or something like that and they had about a thousand. You had to sort of wiggle it and get them in, and, but you had to put your scores down for that student as part of the, as the, as the whole average. Well now, if, for test optional, if, you don't, if they don't submit scores, then you don't have to include them in your average. So all of a sudden the average SAT score for the test optional schools goes up. So it's kind of a win-win for them because they, they can let in whoever they want now without the scores and they can, and they get a they get a bump in their average SAT score. See how that works? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so as I said, as I said, I think this is this is this is it's it's 
it, you know, the way it's all going to shake out. But for right now, that is what is going on. That is what's going on now. And, and the context of this is really important because it's done in the wake of the Varsity Blues scandal. And this is basically, I put up Lori Loughlin here, she's sort of been the poster child for, 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 the, uh, for the scandal. But it was basically, you know, people were cheating to get in. Um, you know, people were, were having other people take their SATs for them. Um, they had coaches that were sort of, you know, for the rowing team saying, you know, yeah, we want this person on the rowing team and so on. There was a lot of, a lot of dodgy things going on in terms of admissions, in terms of trying to get students in that necessarily would not qualify otherwise. Um, and the easiest way to find those students, by the way, is to look at their SAT scores. If you've got students that are outside of that SAT, outside of those SATs, student 1100 and the average score 1350, well, we're gonna, we're gonna investigate that student and see whether that student actually got in on merit. So this way, they don't have to show the scores, so it's, it, the, the theory is that it's a, it'll be a lot easier for, to sort of hide those students. Or, and, and certainly you get a bump on the, on the increases your prestige because you get a bump on your average test scores, and so for them, test optional is the way to go, okay? Now, let's just think about it for a minute, though. I mean, if, there, if you're really looking to avoid sort of investigations in the future with this, um, you, know, if, you know, like I said, I was a former lawyer. The first thing I do is go look at all the students that they let in who didn't have scores. You know, they're gonna be found out anyway. So I think for a lot of reasons, and I don't wanna be, you know, I don't wanna sound too cynical about it, but this is what's going on. Um, the, 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 these schools that are test optional are really sort of, I think, a little bit over their skis on this stuff um, because it really is, the more people understand really what it's about, um, I think the reputations of these schools may suffer a little because of it because it is just sort of just, you know, they're, they're sort of shooting a messenger here. Um, if they, you know, it, it's not the test's fault that they, these students can't get in. Um, but they'd rather just not have to have the test show that they can't. They really don't, aren't getting it on there. Okay, any questions on that so far? But here's the, so here's the thing. Basically, especially for the test optional schools, you need to submit scores, right? Because it's going to, and, and they're going to need to be higher, actually, than if you just do test required. Because test required is going to average in all the scores here. one. So that's going to affect, like I said, scholarship money, right? Because now you need a really much higher SAT score to get scholarship money. And um, it's going to affect just, you know, who they're letting in. 